at the end of the day, if you look at the fundamentals, I think it still remains very, very solid, um, very intact story. And it's actually uh, technically one of the best, um, you know, self-driving, self-transformation story. So I won't be too much worried at this level, uh, because if you look at, say, on a scenario analysis, right, assuming billability, looking at is like games, um, is e-commerce, is advertising, is live streaming business, all this all together, put together, uh, it actually have a decent upside. I mean, if you look at it on the SOTP level, this is still one of the few companies that if you look at it on the top line revenue or maybe on the user growth, we're talking about a 40 and 30% cake. So with the backdrop of internet user growth and time spent decelerating, um, so I think this is still actually one of the best, still best transformation story. You're talking about user growth and the company wants to double its user base by 2023. That's a very ambitious target. Do you think they can do it? Oh, I think they can do it. I think this is actually quite in the grabs. They can definitely do it. Um, but the, the thing is that, of course, the tricky part is, of course, regulatory headwind. Um, if you ask me, I think regulatory headwinds is something that is difficult to price at this stage. Um, and uh, But what you see in the track record, right, in the past, uh, since they were IPO, what they promise to the market, they were able to deliver it, right? So I think this is something that's still uh, very promising. Um, I still remember back in the days when they were IPO, they were trying to IPO for the US listing. Um, investors don't yet entirely get the story. But if you think about this is like China's YouTube, right? And then a lot of this engagement, the user time spent at a certain point, um, they're actually even higher than WeChat, right? So um, I think that is actually how engaging the users can be. Um, and now because they're diversifying their content verticals, so they will be able to engage a bigger group of users tapping into a bigger addressable market. So I think that MAU um, target, especially if you compare to some like short video platform, there's certainly about, you know, to the north of, you know, six, 700 million. Um, I, I think you're looking at that 400 million is not entirely, you know, aggressive because if you compare to some of the short video platforms. Okay, when we talk about uh, some of their competition, uh, it is competing against the likes of Kwai Show, already traded mm. in the Hong Kong market, other ones like ByteDance. How does it compare to those? Okay, um, I think if you look at the short video landscape, right, I don't think it will be, you know, it will be several players, right? Um, and because each of it has a very unique differentiation angle. So I won't think that, I mean, it's competing in the same space, but and in the sense that um, they can, you know, all of them, right, can also be having their own differentiation. And Billy Billy stand in a group of that, they have a very, you know, engaging users, uniquely engaged users. And then also it will attract a different, um, you know, advertising budget as well. And also they still have, you know, the, the core business like game, live streaming, e-commerce. I mean, it's also very diversified. So at the end of the day, the short video market is going to be, you know, huge, right? It's going to be a multi-year story. So um, certainly I think it will be one of the meaningful player 